I am so sports. You know me there, yeah? I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right as representing for all my You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share yeah, share. If me not sure, that me, me not say it Know who score, that me, me not say it Never know no game play, that me, me not say it If me never seen a game, me not know who play For your sports news, better come over your son For your soccer news, then come over your son If you don't love sports, they'll come over your for the day, don't you want to love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or no Argentina with these crap of players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Tricknick Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? Made up of 18 Jamaican herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. That sport for the best authentic sportswear. You check Wilton Sports for the one the best authentic sportswear. Wilton Sport. Full change advertise fee. And if we roll out the numbers, remember, no easy laugh, no power. Some sports were for take notes. Them full of dreams and whoops. Them why them come and sell rope. When the air is only one, get yeah, the air is only one goat. And that a will sort, yeah, that a will sort, yeah, that a will sort sports. Yeah, ball boots, ball tops, ball shots, shing yard, ball socks. Them kind of drip you quick for make your ex call back. Little quick, this in my boots and ball out. I want that. My Nike ticket pretty, I'm a leader, sal black. Dribble down, you feel it, grip, and feel my can drop. Slide tackle all my own team, and all this now pop. Why? Because I'm by the supper. All right, greetings, good evening, welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Manning's Man. And as usual, I want to welcome you to the platform. Is this, if this is your first time, it is indeed a great pleasure to have you as part of the movement, part of the work. If you're a regular viewer and you are a subscriber, awesome. You will certainly enjoy this one this evening. All right, so big up yourselves wherever you are. You may have watched some EPL games today and see so you, you've seen the demise of Chelsea. You understand me? Uh, Manchester City rebounding, having come in close to a loss. You know, um, Tottenham Hotspur is winning. So lots of stuff happening. You've seen a good JPL game between Tivoli Gardens and also Don't Behold Them. Don't Behold Them. Or yesterday, you may have enjoyed that Manning Cup final. And uh, just maybe you enjoyed the uh, the Dacosta Cup final, sorry, and also enjoyed the Ben Francis Cup. Big up to sure improvements and Leon Bailey kick out with it. <laughs> uh, RR, bless up yourself, Liverpool for life. Uh, Duklan, 
Pesso. Big up yourself to all the other persons who are on. This is I Am Sure Sports. As usual, big up to all our sponsors, Prestige Finance and Launch Legacy, Trickney Catering, Wilson Sports, and all the persons who made this work. To all our moderators, we want to thank you as well as we get ready to get into this very intriguing and this awesome, awesome, awesome interview. Remember, we don't like to stop. We don't like to pause our videos to ask people to hit the like button, to subscribe, and to share. So if you have not done one of those things, you can go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. You can also support the movement, the work, by giving a super sticker or a super chat if you so feel. All right. Big up, John Powell and Mr. E. So CC. Uh, Kahim Dixon for U20 call up. We shall see. All right. Of course, you know, we always want to start by giving thanks for the breath in our lungs. And as we encourage people to continue to look to the hills from whence cometh our help, our help comes from the Most High God, the one who has made the heavens and the earth. I mean, I don't know. I just heard a story today that the man who made Baba Ruth, he was murdered. We don't know. I don't know what. I just heard that today on the news. And I'm thinking, like, when will we stop in this island, on this island? You understand me? So many of the good people are moving away because of the crime. But it is time, people, that we lift our voices, that we begin to live in love. We begin to love people, show care and concern for all persons, and not just, um, yeah, you understand me? And not just ourselves, you understand me? But show concern for the brother. All right, today we have a uh, 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 Jamaican reggae boy, center forward right i want you to know this this person is the only player right now that represents the national team that has played in two world cups all right a lot of people don't know that but he has played in the under 17 and in the under 20 world cup um he must be commended because he's one of those players who has made the transition. He, he has flown under the radar, but he continuously make a mark. And he's, he's been a part of the setup and he has been given just as much as everyone else. He knows more about himself than, than I do. So we're gonna have him on today and he's going to come on and share his story. And I know that you'll be inspired you will be motivated, and I hope that a youngster will, 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 will hear something that gives him hope to fight again, to believe again, and to put um, hard work into his uh, purpose. Um, the only thing is that he attended KC, and that is going to cause a problem to this stream, because, you know, all of the KC people are going to come out and see all kind of things, all right? But um, let's see. Let's welcome Mr. Romario Williams. How you doing, my brother? Welcome to Irish Sports. <laughs> <laughs> First, what correction? One World Cup. I never played the one? U20 World Cup. Yeah. U17 World Cup, I did. Not the U20. You didn't go to the U20? No. We never qualified to the U20. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We All never right, right. To the U20. So one World Cup. Was it, was it, um, what's the name of the Brazilian that took over the program after the under 17? La after the under 17 yeah after the under 17 because there's a brazilian coach that took over the program no, when 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 i was playing under 17 the coach was donzel i think that the, the brazilians were before or maybe no the no. brazilian the brazilian Came right after when that. i was yeah when i was playing under 20 it wasn't the brazilians though okay it wasn't the brazilians okay all right, listen, see it? I start getting things wrong, so might as well I leave no, it no, to the no, house. that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but but, but he's I, on, he's could, I make it, could I make it could I make it stay and make the resume look beautiful, <laughs> but that's not how I operate. All right. So um listen, a lot of people, you know, they heard the name, they have seen you in the jersey, but they don't know the person. So um right. you know, help them to no, Romario William, just tell us about your, your beginnings, your childhood, your family, schooling, and all of that. Go ahead, Romario. I mean, first and foremost, I'm an easygoing individual, you know. Um, I'm really easygoing, but also an extrovert. You know, I just like to have fun, like to have a good time. Um, I consider myself a very social person. 
very approachable person, you know, and one that's very direct, can be extremely blunt at times, but that's just who I am. Um, a little bit about my upbringing. I was, I was the youngest of three boys growing up. You know, I grew up in Portmore, Jamaica. The youngest of three boys. Grew up in a football family. You know, dad played football in Jamaica. Two older brothers played football as well. All three of them, along with, you know, uncles, all played professionally in Jamaica, but nobody really transitioned to overseas, you know. So I was the first. Right, before you go any family. further, of the five, who they said was the best one? After five, <laughs> meaning no, I, after four. After four, yeah. After four, I, if I'm being completely honest, I have a brother by the name of Joel. Talent wise, he was way above everybody. Okay. He was way above everybody, talent wise. When you talk about the complete package as a footballer, I don't think there was really any weakness in his game. And but for whatever reason, his career never really propelled to the heights that we all envisioned or thought it would, you know. And But a very talented player in my eyes, but unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't transfer to the next level. But I was the first one and the only one so far from the family to play professional football overseas. I was, a, I was the first and only one as well, as of right now, to play college, collegiate football. You know, so, you know, I think with the, with the family background of being, you know, professional football players, you know, it made my decision easy as a kid, you know, growing up, you know, because the game was introduced to me at an early age and, and from ever since, you know, it was the only thing I really knew. And then as I, as I, as I got older and I realized that this can be potentially a way out and an opportunity for me. You know, to not only take care of myself, but also family and loved ones. You know, I, I started taking it more seriously. And, you know, fortunately for me, I can say that hard work paid off. Because Wait. I've been doing this, I've been doing this now nine years professionally, going into my 10th season. Okay, where did you actually start out in terms of, you started out from primary school, um, played for St. Catherine, did you do that, move on to KC? So, did you, how did, so, yeah, yeah. so I played, so I played prep school, prep school football at institution called Southern Air Prep. It's not a well-known institution, but may his soul rest in peace, the great Luton Shelton went to Southern Air Prep. Okay. And, you know, along with myself, um, his siblings as well went to Southern Air Prep, so we all went to school together. And then in, the early stages of my football career as a kid, I played with the Aberview First Kickers program. Oh. But, but at the youth level, I played for a, a bunch of different teams. I was fortunate to also represent Kingston and St. Andrew, you know, in the, in the Parish League Parish as a kid. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so how you, lived there, in, how, you lived, how you lived in Portmore and played for Kingston and St. Andrew? Because my team that I played for was in Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> I never played for any team. Okay, okay. So how did you how did you end up at Casey? Because Casey is where your high school career started. Right. Yeah. So so Casey. So after doing the GSAT, uh, you have put me on the spot now. But after doing the GSAT, I actually passed a JC. But Casey was the school <laughs> I wanted to be at. KC was the school I wanted to be at. You're going to make all the JC but anyway. them unsubscribe from the channel. Listen, you passed that, a JC. That is fine. <laughs> yeah, I actually passed a JC and that, that's the truth. I actually passed a JC but I never see myself as a JC man. I never wanted to go to JC. For me, it was always KC. It was KC or nowhere else. You get know what I'm saying? I mean, I pretty much, I spent a lot of time growing up in East Kingston. Um, okay. I've Winward, I've Winward Road. Some way, some will say Dunkirk. And um, so I spent a lot of time in and around KC, you know, and a lot of immediate family and friends went to KC as well. So it was the only place that I genuinely wanted to be. So at the time, the, the, the coach for the youth four teams was coach Dean Smith and him and my dad had a pretty good friendship. 
you know, so that was pretty much our channel, our avenue to get in a transfer from JC into KC. And then my, my football career at the high school level started there and just took off from there. Okay, so you played, you played Pepsi, Coles, all of those things at KC. Did you have yeah, any every, success? At every those, level. Did you have any success at those levels? One Pepsi my first year. That's okay. the only schoolboy title I won. Yeah, That's the only schoolboy title I won. Yeah, one Pepsi my first year. Lie. I beg your pardon. Sorry. Went to the last in the semi final my first year. Sorry, I take that back. Last in the semi final my first year at Pepsi. Last the camper down. And then my second year at Pepsi, I won. Beat Georges in the final. My second year at Pepsi, I won. Transition into Coles. Coles, we never really do so well. We had the same, same set of players, the same group, but for whatever reason, that success never followed. So we never really had the same level of success at the Coles level. And then Manning Cup, I always felt like we were close, but we never got over the hump. We always had very good teams. We, all, we always had winning teams, talented players. But for whatever who reason... Some, who, who are some of the players you'd have had in your Manning Cup team um, during those years of Manning Cup at Kingston College? We had the likes of um, Jamie Hyde. Oh. And, um, yeah, we had Jamie Hyde. We had Georgina James. You know, myself. Um, Andre here. Tazio Gilpin. A lot of names that you might not even be familiar with, but really, really very good footballers at the time. Um, Jason Greenland, Kamari Osborne, to name a few. And yeah. sorry for anybody that I might left out, but we had a really talented, talented group. Very good group. Good crop of players, talented players. We had a good job, but just said, for whatever reason, we never had the level of success. At the at the Monaco level, we we went to Walker Cup final, lost the judges. But outside of that, my best Monaco Cup, yeah, it was always getting to the second round and then getting knocked out. Knocked Never out. went to the semi final. Yeah, we yeah. only went to the Walker Cup final, my final year, and we lost the judges in the final. Yeah, people ask, and how how did how did you, uh, uh, what form was it? Your school form or at Harbour View or? club football that you were spotted and drawn into the under 17 team that qualified for the world cup and tell us about that experience how it happened how you got called up and just that whole under 17 world cup qualification um process so to to be honest with you um as best as i can remember the under 17 process was a very long one because obviously it started out with a a, a big crop of players, players from the rural and urban side of the country, right? So, I mean, every I think what worked in my favor and one of the, the good things that happened to me, there was whenever the camps were called every weekend, I think, I don't think there was a weekend when I wasn't selected to be at a camp. And then with that process, you had players who came and stayed and you had players who came and they didn't stay. Unfortunately for me, every single camp that I was invited to, I was there the following week. And I was there the week after that. So with that, it seemed as if my chances were, became, were becoming more, you know, increasingly likely that I'm going to be a part of the, the crop of players because at that time, they invested in that group because it was a, it's been a while since the last time Jamaica qualified to the U-17 World Cup. So they invested a lot in that group and they took us to Brazil on a six-week training camp in the middle of December. So we had no Christmas, we had no New Year. At 15 year old, we were all in Brazil, locked away, just football, eat, sleep, drink, and just football again. But it was, it was, it was, a memorable experience for sure and one that ultimately paid off because we achieved what we set out to achieve from the beginning which was to qualify for the world cup and we did just that knowing that we were actually hosting the qualifiers in montego bay right. so um the, the the 
the training camp itself was a very tough one because I was one of the I was one of the few players who actually wanted to leave when we were in Brazil. Oh. Because initially it was a three week camp. And then while we were there, they decided to extend the camp another three weeks. So with that, we were missing out on school and all of that stuff. So they decided, okay, they're gonna get tutors to come to Brazil to help us, especially the guys who were in Fifth Farm going going into um CSEC, myself yeah. included and some of the other guys. And then when we got back to Jamaica, we didn't even get the chance to go back to school because after we got back to Jamaica, I think we, oh. they gave us like a week and then we went, then right, we went into camp again. Yes. Right. So we went right into camp again for the qualifiers in Montego Bay. So we, I, didn't, I didn't go back to school. If my memory serves me right, I didn't go back to school until March. And then Whoa. if you know anything about December, if you know anything January, about February, March, four months. March, right. Yeah. yeah. And if you know anything about Fifth Farm, once you get to March, you don't really go to school anymore because it's and this is like I know. study. Study break. Right. So yeah. you just you're just preparing for C sick. So <clears throat> at that point, I was just pretty much playing catch up, just trying to, you know, get as much information, as much material as possible to prepare myself for the upcoming exams. And then even with the exams coming up, we were still in camp because now that we qualified, we had to be in camp to train and prepare for the upcoming World Cup. So it was a challenge all around. It was a challenge all around, but, but one that I can say myself and the rest of the guys within the group, I think we all did a good job at you know, applying ourselves. And um, it paid off for us because you know, we all got through it. I mean, each one helped one. You know, because a lot of us were taking the same courses, and, yeah. you know, and we got and we got through it. There were times when I would leave camp, I would leave camp in the evening, go home, study, go do my exam in the morning, and then after exam finish for the day, I'm going straight back to camp. So that was literally my routine at that point in time. Wow. Who who are some of the other players in the team? For those who don't remember that qualification. So that team had Omar Olness was the captain. Um, we had Alvas Powell, Andre L.A. Lewis, Zelano Barnes, Romario Jones, um, Patrick Palmer, O'Shane Jenkins, Nico Campbell, Richard Trench. A, lo a long, a very, very talented group and a, and a long list of names. Uh, Jason Wright, Jason Wright was a striker at the time. Kimo Wallace, Pat, um, I think I said Patrick Palmer already. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very talented group. You know, Cardell Bembo. Yeah, I was wondering if Bembo was it in there because, yeah, yeah. Cardell yeah. Bembo. Cardell Bembo got the assist. For the and, goal at the World Cup. For the, uh, for the goal at the, the goal at Zelana scored. Yeah, yeah. At the World Cup. At the World Cup, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Zelana Junior, Junior Fleming was a part of that group as well. Up until. He didn't go to the, the World Cup, though. He didn't go to the World Cup. That's the only thing. He was a part of the group every step of the way, but he didn't go to the World Cup. Reason being, they were saying he was he had the age to be a part of the next group, which I thought didn't make any sense because he oh, was there. Oh, because he was way. younger than you guys. He was like a right. year younger. He was two years younger. Two years younger. Whoa. So that group that went to the World Cup was ninety four, and I believe he's ninety six. Oh, ninety six. He's ninety six. Oh, right. I believe he's ninety six. So they, he was a part of the group every step of the way, but he never went to the World Cup. Oh, Melvin Blair, Melo. Melvin Blair, Melo. <laughs> Melo. You know, yeah. Notice you don't remember Mel another one there from outside. I keep no, that. man. Listen, I'm going to call Richard Trench. Choo Choo and Palmer. Um, well, I know. Renico Clark. So Richard Trench, Renico Clark, and Nico Campbell was the three goalkeepers. You have um, Puff, Walker, Walker. Anthony Walker went to from Rossi's. Yeah, yeah, Rossi's. yeah, yeah. Anthony yeah, yeah. Walker as well. Yeah. Mel yeah. Blair, Mel yeah. from From. From Manning. Hey, careful enough. Manning. Manning. Sorry, <laughs> Manning. Manning. Sorry, Manning. Westman. So, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. Very, good, very, good, very, good, very, very good team. Very, very, very good very team. Good team. A lot of those, like I think a lot of even 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 Melo, I mean, went away to college. Jason Wright, a lot of the guys, Ben. A lot of those players, um, a lot of those players. A lot of the guys in this team, like you, mm -hmm. had the opportunity right. to 
to probably do it at the highest level. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. You know, that whole transition because, like, probably you are you, you are the only one. No, that, that's no. clear. Professional? No. No, in, in terms of in terms of in the national setup. In the national setup. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But Jesse that, Wright, Jesse group, Wright played course. professionally. Yeah, Benbo is playing professionally. Um, yeah, I know Melo, yeah, um, British Wright. College and thing. Yeah, Alvas. Alvas. Yeah, Al yeah Alvas, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really just played at hard for this season. Omar is still playing professionally. Omar was just overseas in Europe. Um, yeah. Well, I think I think that's it, you know. Z Zelano Barnes it. played in the Premier League out here as well, so. J Zelano played in the Premier League before he left, yeah. 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 All right. So, so that, but the World Cup was a good experience for you, right? I mean, great, great what, experience. Yeah. What was the most memorable moment? Yeah. Most memorable moment for me. Yeah. Um, you talking? I mean, I. In the, quali go. the qualifier, or was it like the goal in the World Cup, or the players that you went there and you met? Like, what part of it was? Like, wow, this. Yeah, I think it was just. I mean, the overall experience at the yeah. World Cup. It was. It even after so many years, you know, and football has taken me a lot of places. Um, I've had, I've come across a lot of people, met a lot of people, but I think just the overall experience and how everything was organized, how everything was structured. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's a memory that will live with me for forever. You know, um, it was obviously the first time for all of us, that group, being in somewhat of a professional environment, to say the least, because even though we, yeah, we're all 15 and 16 year olds, it almost felt like a taste of professional football. You know, like this is what the next level is like, the way everything was done and, you know, the whole organization and, you know, the hotel, you know, the bus from the day we landed, you know, just for um, cameras everywhere, you know, police, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think that was like the real, you know, the first taste for a lot of the players of what the next level looks would like, like and what it would be like, you know. So as I said, I think it's a memory and something that was stick with all of us, not just myself, all of us for the rest of our lives because... You know, not not a lot of people can say they're playing a World Cup despite what level it is. Yeah. So you came back to Jamaica, you'd have gotten all your CXE results. So you went to six, you did well in your CXE in spite of all the camps and stuff and, and went to six form. I never have a choice, me did have to do well. <laughs> <laughs> never have a choice, me did have to do well. Yeah. yeah so me have so you, were, you were able to balance your schoolwork and football at that level. That's awesome, man. Yeah, a lot that, of people that's kind of been the challenge. That's that's kind of been the challenge for me all my life. Because even while I was even, I recently completed my bachelor's playing professional football. Because even when I left oh. high school and I transitioned to college, I was playing football and still balancing the schoolwork. And then once I got drafted, I took a couple of years off. You know, just well, kinda... we, don't, we don't we don't get to that part yet, you know, because right. you, you came back to KC, finish up KC. And then how from there? So yeah. I came back to KC and played my second season at Money Cup, which turned out to be my last season because I didn't play my final season at Money Cup. I had an, an, I had an extra year, but I didn't stay. Oh, I you, have, you I could have played. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I could have played one more year. But what was your pressure on you to stay and play? Or you had already made up your mind that this is it, bigger things? To be honest, there was a part of me wanted to stay and play, but then just after careful consideration and just conversations about the bigger picture and the opportunity that's in front of me, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to take on a new challenge. You know why I ask that? Because uh, oftentimes I hear people say, why did they let the player stay and play one more year? Why they didn't? Almost like the player don't make a decision. So that is why... Right. I want people to hear that you had a choice to make and you chose right. not to play no matter what the yeah, pressure I chose was. right yeah. I chose not to play it, this yeah. was not a decision that was made by parents or, or 
any outside now. This was a decision I made. But parents, along with immediate family and, and you know, people that have valued their opinions, all had a say, but at the end of the day, it was ultimately my decision. And it was a decision that I made. And, yeah. you know, because as I said, I could have stayed and played my last year in Manning Cup, but I'm actually happy I left because I don't know if I would have played my last year at Manning Cup as a fortis man. And um, so, so everything happened for a reason. So I can gladly say I left high school as a fortis man. Because I don't know <laughs> if I would have stayed and played my last year at KC. Oh, 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 I see what I mean. Because you could have probably did upper six somewhere else. Yeah, uh, I, was gonna I, go I was going to go across the street, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's stupid. Yeah, I was yeah, go so, the some would say you're going over the better side of North Street, but management no, 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 won't no, say no, that. Let's no, not get no, into no, problems. No no no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't say that. You can't say that. <laughs> see? see what there's, I one, so, there's one <laughs> college and only one college on North Street, and we all know which college that is. Oh, there's only one college. One. <laughs> One. Uh, careful now, no, because you already didn't choose to go to Jamaica <laughs> College. I know you're saying these things. You know, when you get yourself in no, problems. I'm telling him, go to one maybe, college. The one maybe college that, exists. Maybe, maybe you have to live on Nas Street. You can't go nowhere across Hope Road and all Hope Road. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm welcome anyway, man. But yeah. all great all great institutions in its, in, in its own right. You know, all that talk is just like a bantan. You know, yeah, man, definitely. Lanta. Mm. So, so you went to college. Um, talk to us about that now. Which college did you go to? And just tell us about your college experience and getting drafted. And then, like I said, you took off two years and stuff. Talk to us about that and the difficulties you'd have endured, you know, just completing your college education and playing professionally at the same time. Right. So, college was easily probably one of the hardest moments of transition in my life for sure i mean for 17 years i've only known one thing you know I raising a house with family with both parents and all that stuff so leaving all of that behind even though i <clears throat> i i visited the u.s frequently you no know, this this felt different because this was different now i'm moving there i'm going to be living there away from everything that i love i know it's like I'm going to have to become a man real fast at 17 because now I'm on my own. So the stuff that, that are usually taken care of for me or the stuff that are usually done for me now, I have to figure those stuff out on my own. For example, grocery shopping. Yeah. Never, ne never necessarily have to worry about grocery shopping, you know. So at 17, knowing at the U.S., you know, I was calling back home, talking, talking to mom, what do I need to get, you know. I need yeah. to get this, I need to get that. And just, you know, just naturally just being homesick, being away from everything that you love, being homesick. And I can honestly say college was when I truly knew what hard work was. And I say that like, not, not that I wasn't training hard or I wasn't working hard when I was in Jamaica playing morning cup or anything like that. The training was hard and we all had to do it. But college was a different ball game. Like the level of Manning Cup to college football is night and day. So leaving Whoa. from Manning Cup and going into college football as a 17 year old, higher level. I really had way, way higher. It's not even close. It's not even close. So I really had to learn what hard work was. And a lot of people, for the viewers, a lot of people don't know this, but my first semester in college, at the end of my first semester, you, we usually have meetings with the coaches and everything, especially the players who are on scholarship. And at the end, at the end of the first the semester. semester, at the end of my yeah. first semester, because your scholarship is renewed on a yearly basis. You, it, it's not, oh, you have a four-year scholarship. No, you're on a scholarship, but your scholarship is renewed on a yearly basis. So halfway through my first year, the end of my first semester, uh, I went into my meeting. I was getting ready to, to come back to Jamaica some days in January 2012. And the coach looked at me and he's, he was like, you have all the tools to be an excellent player. You're, you have all the physical ability, the technical ability, and you're a very clever player. But I'm going to tell you this. 
if you get back here and you're not fit and you're not in shape and you don't learn how to work hard, your college career will be short lived. So you're Whoa. pretty much you're pretty much right there on the spot told me that if you don't get it together, you might just be another player who come to the US for one year and then you, you might have to go back to Jamaica or transfer somewhere else. And which college you which college you're at? Central Florida in Orlando. Okay. UCF. Yeah. And then at the time when I was recruited by them, funny thing, I was playing center mid slash center half. You probably not even know this. At the U17 <laughs> work of when I got recruited by them, I was a center yes. mid slash center half for the U17 team. Now, keep in mind, I went into the team as a striker, you know. Because I've always been a striker. I played Money so Cup it, as a striker. Yes. But what happened was, when I went into the U17, when we were in Brazil, we had a bunch of injuries and we had some players suffering from illness. And we had a, um, we had a practice game and we didn't have enough numbers. And Donzel asked me to play centre for one of those practice games. And I did really well. Impressed, did really well. <laughs> From from that moment until the end of the World Cup, Donswell only saw me as a centre mid slash centre half. He never never played me a striker again. Whoa. Never played me a striker again. From that practice game in Brazil up until the end of the World Cup, through all the training camp, all all the practice, all my reps was as a centre mid or a centre back. Never played me as a forward again. So that's where the college saw me playing. So they, they initially thought I was a centre mid slash so centre back. So when I got there, I was playing centre mid. You know, I was playing centre mid. I was recruited as a centre mid. So my first year in college, I played as a centre mid. I played as a, as a primarily as a number six slash number eight. My freshman year in college. My first year in college. Okay, interesting. I played. I played as a number six slash number eight. So what happened at the end of my first year, going into my second year? I had a meeting with the coach and I told him that now that when I went to when I was going to UCF, I had Macaulay Tolo and Deshaun Brown there with me. And Macaulay Tolo oh, and Deshaun, Deshaun Brown from Steps. From Steps, right. Macaulay Tolo, Macaulay Tolo was from St. Casey, Casey and he went to Judges. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. he went to Judges, right. So those were the two strikers for that team. So there was no there was no real need for me to play striker. But those yeah. two guys, after that season, they left. So the striker position now was wide open. So oh, okay. I went to the coach. I went to the coach and I told the coach. Because both, both of them left and both of them went pro. So I went to the coach and I told them, I want to go to the next level. And I think my best chance of getting to the next level is playing as a striker. I've always been a striker, and that's where I want to play come next season. And him opening him eyes wide, looking at me like, <laughs> I'm gonna say, listen, I've always been a striker. Yeah. When you guys saw me, you guys maybe thought I was a center mid slash center back, but that was a temporary thing. I'm not yeah. a center mid, I'm not a center back. I want to go back to being a striker because I think that is what will get me to the next level. And going into the summer, he didn't recruit, he didn't recruit any striker. So I was like, all right, looks like this is going to happen. And then my second year in college, I had a breakout season, one player of the year in the conference. You know, I was all region first team, all conference first team, you know, and all that stuff. So now I'm now nationally recognized because of the year that I had. That's the second season? In my second season, playing back, playing as a striker. How many, how, many goals against, how many goals and assists you had? That season I had, well, I don't remember how much assists I had, but I had 10 goals on the season. 10 goals on the season, but I led the, I, I was voted offensive player of the year, player of the year in the conference. And that year was also the year when I competed against Andre Blakey, because our schools were in the same conference. I don't really want to remind him. I don't really want to remind him about what happened when we did see him. So we're going to leave, leave, leave that alone. But, you know, that, that, that year was really, I can say that was, that year was probably 
the defining moment for me because that's when I started to get national so who recognition. won the game in the conference when you play against Andre team? That that much I can tell. With the, we drew, so we uh-huh. draw two all. We draw two all. Okay. We draw two all, and then them them play we again in the conference semifinal and beat me. Oh, oh, so you thought like you got it? Oh, the man team beat you, man. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not about the, I'm not about the win. But I'm you're talking about, about the court. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not about the win. But you win the battle that he won the war. Ah, uh, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. You know, okay, so, so you're an really offensive player uh, for the for the for the conference that breakout right. season, yes. Right, we made made all conference first team, all region first team, and as I said, this was when I started to gain national recognition. And then for me, it was at this point in time is how do I keep this momentum going? Because yeah. as I said, I want to transition to the next level, which is getting drafted and becoming a professional. So. That's that following summer I didn't I didn't go to Jamaica. So I stayed. There's there's some in the US that they call PDL. It's where like when in the summer all the college players they leave their schools and they go to different PDL teams and they play. And it was important for me to participate in PDL and I did that. I had a really good PDL season. And I carried that momentum over again. And that in that same summer, I started to train with a couple professional teams as well while in college. So okay. that summer, I trained with I trained with Orlando City, even though they were in the USL at the time. The following year, they were going into the MLS. So okay. they, could, they could they could invite you know college players to train. So I trained with Orlando City first team a lot that summer because they were the team that I played PDL with, and I so that we in Seattle. The time Damien was in Seattle, Damien was in Seattle because Damien was drafted by Seattle earlier that year. So I was out there with Damien and training with Seattle. So at this time, I started getting looks with professional teams and being in professional environments because these are the kind of situations that help your your draft stock. So when the time comes for the league to hand out contracts and who they think should be generational leaders and things like that, the more professional teams, coaches, GMs, technical directors, the more you have these people pushing in name and in your corner, then it increases the likelihood of you getting a generation Adidas contract and things of that nature. So all that momentum carried over into my, my third year. Yeah. Never had never had the numbers that I had from my, my second year. Before. Year. Yeah. But but the year that I had before plus the summer. And just being in those professional environments and still making our conference first team, even though I didn't win player of the year again, I still was our conference first team and I still was our region first team. And those things, those things help and go far away. And fortunately for me, I was selected to be a generation Adidas player. And then that was where the professional so career during this started. Time, during this time in college, were you being called up to like U20s or national team? Oh, were yeah. You- oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, so see. I was I was I was selected to the U twenties, but as I said, I didn't. We didn't qualify. We okay. Didn't qualify. We didn't qualify. Okay. But you didn't get and a then, national call up during that time. Oh yeah. Okay. Senior team. Yes. My first. All right. So I didn't make my professional. I didn't make my real official debut for the senior team until 2016. But when I was in high school playing Manning Cup, I was invited to several first team camps. With the local base players. So while you were at Casey, uh, okay. While I was at Casey, right. So I got the opportunity. My first, my first official call up was March, March of 2015, the year I got drafted. That was my first call up. I got called up by Schaefer, Winfred Schaefer. Okay, to the senior team. All right, so your third year, you said, you know, good year, but um, the numbers good weren't... Good year, but uh, the numbers on par, yeah. right. The numbers wasn't wasn't anything like the second year. But did, you enter the a, draft it, that, did, did you enter the draft that year, or you completed your, your final year? No, 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 no. I, went, I entered the draft after my third year, so I didn't complete my final year. Okay. So you entered the draft, and I mean, uh, oh, where were you drafted, and where did you end up? 
I was drafted number three overall to Montreal Impact. Okay. Mm-hmm. And did, did you get trade or did you stay there? I mean, talk to us about that. I mean, so, so funny story. I didn't want to go to Montreal. And let's just say Montreal didn't want me either. So that year, we just played against him the other day when he played for Canada. Kyle Aaron, the striker for Canada. Kyle Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in he was in my draft class as well. He went to school with he went to school with Andre. He went to school with Blakey. Oh, they were at the same and, um, school. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. They were teammates yeah, yeah. in college. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was obviously Kyle is Canadian. Yeah. So Mon- but Orlando had the number one pick. And Mon- Montreal tried to number one to get Kyle and Orlando declined. So the three the three teams that were drafting one, two, and three all needed strikers. But okay. Montreal wanted Montreal wanted Montreal Kyle. Larry. Yeah, and, and right because, and he's, Orlando because wanted he's Canadian. I wouldn't necessarily say Orlando wanted me. The team that wanted me was San Jose. I know for sure. Two teams that I know for sure that wanted me going into that draft because at the draft at the draft at the, Com- the combine nice, at the yeah. combine you have meetings with teams so i had my meet the two teams that i came out of my meeting feeling really good about was san jose and houston dynamo at the time owen Coyle, i don't know if you're familiar with the name but owen Coyle coach bibi at bolton yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, so owen Coyle was the head coach at Houston at the time. And yeah. he loved Jamaicans. Same with the coach that was in San Jose at the time because Sean Francis was at San Jose at the time. Yes. Right? So, but San Jose was drafting at number four. Houston was drafting at number eight. Houston told me, if you're available, we're going to take you. But we doubt you're going to be available at number eight. But if you're available, we're going to take you. San Jose told me point blank, we're taking you at number four. Right? So as I said, Montreal going into the draft, their focus was Kyler. And this is all information that I got after the fact. This is not anything that I knew before. It's after the fact you, you hear all these stories. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You get, you get hit with the facts. So what happened was Orlando took Kyle number one. New York City drafted two and they took Kyrie Shelton. Number two, Montreal was in need of a striker, as I said. The teams that were drafting one, two, and three, all of them needed a striker. So because Orlando declined, Montreal drafted me as the next best option, per se. Yeah. But they didn't necessarily want me. The person that they wanted was Kyle, but Kyle was already taken at number one by Orlando. So Montreal drafted me at number three. I got there. Um... You know, I had a really good preseason for a first year pro. Obviously, you know, you're transitioning you now from college football to yeah. you know, professional football. So the transition wasn't necessarily the smoothest or the easiest. But when whenever the opportunity presented itself, I think I did relatively well with you know what was given to me as a as a player coming out of college. Never really see a lot of playing time early on in the season. Um one thing though, I was always traveling. It, I was always traveling with the group, but um, playing time was far and few. And then, as as the season went by, I I found out that San Jose tried trading for me again in the summer window. San Jose tried to trade for me again in the summer window, and Montreal declined. Only to find, only to see that. So after finding that out. About a week and a half later, it announced that we're signing Drogba. Yes. So now I was already not playing. And Drogba comes in. And Drogba comes in. So it's like, <laughs> all right. So I see how this is going to go. You know, so my first, first year in Montreal, I only played two games. Two games. Two appearances. I only made two appearances my first year at Montreal. So going into my second year, you know, me and my agent, we had the discussions and we were just like, obviously Montreal is not the place for me because playing time is going to be far and few. Now, the preseason, I got way more playing time and way more opportunity than I did the first year. So I felt really good 
about going into the year, even though Drogba was still there. But then at the end of the preseason, the week before the season started, my agent called me and said, um, they're going to trade me to Atlanta United. But Atlanta wasn't coming into the league until 2018. So this now, this year in 2017. No. Atlanta wasn't coming into the league until 2017. Sorry, beg your pardon. Atlanta wasn't coming in until 2017. So this this now that I'm telling you about was preseason 2016, second year as a pro. Yeah. So I got traded preseason 2016 from Montreal to Atlanta. But Atlanta's first year wasn't going to be until 2017. But when teams are coming into the league, they can start make roster moves, sign players, trade for players the year before so they can fill out their roster going into preseason. So what Atlanta did, because they were coming into the league in 2017, and at that time, the USL affiliate was Charleston Battery. Yeah. So they, they, tra they traded for me from, from Montreal and then loaned me to Charleston Battery for the 2016 season. And then okay. that's, when I, that's when I really had a breakout season. Really, really good year. Scored 10 goals as this was like my first time as a pro now getting the opportunities week in week out right scored 10 goals that season and then i thought going into 2018 now atlanta's first year i was going to be with the group but with the coach that came in and the signings that came in they loaned me back to charleston again another season so for the 2018 season i was an atlanta united player but they loaned me back to charleston in 2017. So when they actually came into the league, they loaned you out. Right. So 2017, when they came into the league and they're in the league now, they, they loaned back me to back to Charleston. No, they loaned me back to Charleston. Right. Okay. So now this was my second season in Charleston. And I had a better season. Which is 2018. 2017. We are 2017. Now. Yeah. Right. So 2017 was the year now that I had a really, really good season. Scored 15 goals. Finished third in the league in goals. Um, Dean Kelly won the golden boot that season. Yeah, Dean Kelly always yeah. winning the golden boot. So he has the right. most goals in the USL. In the USL, right. So Dean the Kelly won the golden league. boot that season with 18 goals. Yeah. I finished with 15. And then that's when, you know, the, 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 the first team Carlos for Jamaica became more consistent. Okay. And then that 2017 Gold Cup as well when we made it when we went to the final and we lost against the us right you were in the squad right i was in the squad i had a really good World Cup as well you know because i played all but one game i started of the six games i started five there was just one game that i didn't play and that was the mexico game in the group stage in denver okay but all the other games i started played played a huge role in the team helping the team get to the final and, you know, obviously fell short losing against the U.S. And then, as I said, the call-ups continued going into 2018. Now, 2018, I was officially now with Atlanta because the season that I had in 2017 at the club level and the international level with Jamaica and the Gold Cup success, they called me back and I was with them for 2018. Yeah. For that entire season. Right, so 2018, you're right. Uh, lots and lots of stuff. Let me just take a couple of comments from the people quickly. Um, uh, somebody said, um, I think, or oh, this one says, uh, score two world class goal at the Gold Cup. That's a 2017 Gold Cup. Um, Rob Smith is saying that you scored um, two world class goal. Uh, one was against Canada. I think, I think Romario is frozen. Over there. You hearing? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, think we're having uh, some issue with the connection for Romario. So let's hope that he will um, be able to reconnect. Romario, if you're hearing me, um, you're frozen right now. Don't know if the battery has died on the gadget that he's using um so yeah so let's see if he he will come back in so let's see how that goes um but very interesting story 
like I said, oftentimes you you see the players and you don't know, you know, some of the, the personal battles and you don't know the, the journey, the past and, and people people get very critical when they see them on the field. But you just you, you you just don't know. You know, you don't know the fight, the hard work, the dedication that they put into some of these things. And these guys, uh, uh people call them dunce and all of that. A lot of these guys have their college education. And we, we watch the game and say, oh, them money are done. Them can't read, them can't this. And here's the next player who has completed his collegiate studies, right? Um, while being a professional player, you'll hear that part of the story as well. Um, want to get in a couple of your comments. I think Romario is back with us. Um, oh, yeah, the battery died. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a slight interruption, slight interruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a problem. I figured that that would have happened. But it's always good if you, if you turn it. It's better if you turn the phone this way. Yes, um, yeah, because you see, there you go. So it, yeah, there we go, it right. looks, it looks better. All right. So Rob Smith was saying you scored two world class goals at that Gold Cup that you were speaking about, and right. then he right. Someone said, um, look at his goal versus Canada. I think mm -hmm. it was from that same goal cup you scored a beauty against against Canada. In the quarter final. What, what, what are your best goals for Jamaica? Are your no, best no, no. goals hands down? No, 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 no. Best goal hands down, no. No. For Jamaica? My best, my best goal for Jamaica is not the Canada goal. No. My best goal for Jamaica is the one against Curacao. Yeah? At least for me. For me personally. I mean others might might have different opinion. Others might say the Canada goal, but I think the Curacao goal, for me personally, is a better goal than the Canada goal. Describe, describe it for those who don't remember that Curacao goal. The, Cura, the Curacao goal was from a very, very narrow angle. A very narrow angle and it was, it was nil all at the time and I was literally about to come off. Literally <laughs> about to come off. And it was Jovan Watson, Aka, played me through. And it was from a very narrow angle, but I don't think the goalkeeper expected me to shoot. But I just locked my ankles and strike straight through the ball as hard as I can and came out of the foot like a rocket. Came yeah. out of the foot like a rocket. All right, all right. Uh, Jackie Love TV says, Romario Williams was brilliant from a young, um, young age, uh, fully talented, and then um Manny's man ask him how many of the under 17 went to the under 20 uh from from your time at least at least 80 85 maybe 90 percent of the under 17 group transitioned to the u20 okay All right, majority of that group transitioned to u20 yeah this one is from jackie love tv uh -huh. ask him about what from southern Air prep school yeah, Somebody, yeah, yeah. Somebody who knows you well enough. Right, 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 right. That, yeah, that's that's where it all started. Coach Oliver. First okay. coach. First, 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 first coach. Coach Oliver from Southern Mary Prep. Yeah. yeah, and Pesa say you can play anywhere on the field. Some someone is saying that um um I, I don't know if you want to answer this. Uh uh what role did um uh Craig Butler play in your development at what point <laughs> you were a part of Phoenix? All right, so let me let me let me <laughs> Let me make this you know, listen, you can't you can't play the fifth you know, if you want. <laughs> no, no, I'm not even play the fifth. Craig Butler, yeah. Craig, Craig Butler is somebody where I respect greatly. But oh, okay. um I was I uh, I played one season under Craig Butler when he was a coach at Shortwood. And then uh, obviously he transitioned from Shortwood and he started the Phoenix. But when Phoenix started out and then started playing and competing in the Kasafa League. I was no longer a Phoenix player. So under the Phoenix umbrella, I never actually represented Phoenix. But Craig Butler coached me and was a part of my development as a teenage player. But as, as I say, I never actually represented Phoenix in any competitive games or competitive tournament. Because when, when, when everything started with Phoenix, everything started out, I was no longer at Phoenix because I left Phoenix and I went back to Aberview. But I did play for him when he was the coach. I played U13 for him at Shotwood when he was the coach at Shotwood. Okay, all right. So let's get back to 
the story. So 2018, that's where we were. You were at Atlanta, having had a brilliant 2017 Gold Cup where Jamaica went to the finals. 2018 season, you were at Atlanta United. Right. 2018 season, I was at Atlanta. That's the year yeah. I won one MLS Cup with Atlanta United. Oh, I bet you a lot of people never know you won an MLS Cup. <laughs> well, I'd like to think that they'd know that. <laughs> for, for at least the people who follow my career, that is. Yeah, so 2018, but, what was um, Almaran was there? Almaran was there, yeah. Miguel Almaran was there, yeah. It's Miguel Almaran. It was after that he went to Newcastle, right? Right, after, after, that, after season. that season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah. that season, he went to Newcastle, yeah. yeah. So that team, no offense. No offense to anyone, any past teammates, shooter teammates, but I think it's definitely hands down the best team that i've been a part of that atlanta listen that atlanta team just coming into mls they were fire with almaran man that was no i'm telling you yeah that was that was no honest. offense to any teammates that i have at the national level club level old teammates current teammates, teammates world cup be, level <laughs> trust me that team having, is having spent so many so much time with them in brazil you don't rate that under 17 team higher. No, I didn't say okay. I don't rate the team. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying this Atlanta team is the best team. Okay. Now, if you're asking me to name teams, no, that's a different conversation. But number one, as of right now, at this stage of my career, is um, the Atlanta team. But I do believe this current group that we have at the national team, we can achieve something special. So we can this national team the core and the group that we have right now maybe can trump that yeah yeah man world cup runner 16 at least but at the, but at the end of the day at the end of the day you are a judge winning right there, there you go and we put ourselves right now in a very good position to achieve something incredible come next year so hopefully all being well we can execute and carry that momentum going yeah so after 2018 in atlanta um, where did the career go from that? 2019 started in Atlanta as well. I was back with Atlanta in 2019. And uh, then... You were a part of the Gold Cup that summer? Because we had Gold no. Cup in... Okay. No, I wasn't a part of the 2019 Gold Cup. So I was in Atlanta. And then halfway through the season, I got traded to Columbus Crew. A trade that I initiated. Because what happened was after we won the MLS Cup, we pretty much brought back the same group for the most part yeah. the same set of players um but we had a coaching change tata martino wasn't there anymore he left he took the, um, the mexico national team job and we we brought in a new coach frank de boer dutch dutch coach and let's just say that that wasn't a good time in my career Okay. With, with all the, the success and the momentum that I had from 2018 going into 2019. So you moved to... You moved to... Columbus you, Crew. Columbus Crew. And that's where you right. finished out the season. That's where I finished the 2019 season, right? Season, yes. Yes. Okay. And then 2020 was a pandemic year. Pandemic. So that year, I signed a one-year deal with Miami FC in the USL. Pandemic year. I, I scored eight goals. That season, we only played a total of 16 games. I had eight goals that season for Miami. And that gave me the move where I went to Egypt when Damon and I was in Egypt together. Right. So that's, and so you, you spent, uh, was it a year that you and Damon spent in Egypt? I never spent a year. Damon spent almost a year. <laughs> I, I spent six, I spent six months, but the six months I spent was for personal reasons that you know, I probably don't want to get into it this time. But yeah, um, it, was, it was personal reasons why I left Egypt. Um, let's just put it this way. Things, things started out well. And to be fair, I was actually having a good season because halfway through the season, I had five goals. So, you know, I was very much on my way to a double digit, another double digit season. Yes. Um, but then, as I said, personal issues happen um and mentally i was i was out of it you know and i had to make a tough decision you know and when i left egypt i didn't return 
Okay. So you didn't go back to Egypt, all yeah. right? I spent six uh, months. Six December months. To June, right. And, and so when you came back to the States in June, you went, you went back to the USL? No. So when I came back to the US that summer, I was out of a team, out of contract. Well, I was technically still on a contract with the Egyptian club, but I was out of a team. So in the midst of all of that, I was just working with the club to try to get my contract terminated because of personal reasons, as I mentioned, but they, they weren't trying to do that. They weren't, trying, they weren't trying to terminate my contract because they felt like maybe I had an offer from a team in the US and they didn't want to terminate my contract so I can just sign with anybody freely. But that was not the case. I just wanted to terminate my contract because mentally I wasn't in the space to return to Egypt. I wasn't going to return to Egypt and, and continue okay. my playing career there. So what happened, the, 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 the club refused to terminate my contract. And after, I'd say, two, three months passed because they were anticipating my return. And I told them, I'm not coming back. So you guys don't need to look out for me because I'm not coming back. And I had, a, I had a meeting, conversation over the phone with the president. And that conversation got pretty ugly. Nice. It got nice. Yeah, yeah, it got pretty <laughs> ugly. Yeah. And, and that pretty much... I'd say solidified my decision in not returning. So from that, you know, everything was a hardball with them until they ultimately came around. Oh, and then okay. They ultimately came around and they're like, listen, if you guys receive an offer, we will help to facilitate a move. And that's how I ended up going to Kuwait. I didn't want to go to Kuwait. I've never heard of Kuwait as a football country before. I never, I, ne I, had, I had no idea of the league in Kuwait, but the team wanted a striker. They approached me. We negotiated the terms. It was a good deal. And we made it happen because at the time, it, honestly, it was probably the only way I was going to get out of my Egypt contract because the team in Kuwait, they paid the club in Egypt a transfer fee. Okay, okay. So the Kuwaiti club paid for, a, for you to transfer from Egypt to Kuwait. To Kuwait, which, right. which now would be um, back in a 2021 into 2022. So this now, we're in 2021 now, right. So this is summer of 2021. So I joined the Kuwait club August of 2021. Okay. And, 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 and how long did you stay? Kuwait, I did a full season. I did a full year. But again, and <laughs> again, this season, this season in Kuwait, let's say it was hampered by injuries. One injury after the next. I had, a, I had a lower back issue that kept me out for about six weeks. But luckily, fortunately, during that time, there was no games being played. So I was missing out on training and all that stuff. And then with treatment and everything, it got better. But I was never my normal self okay. because if if anybody have dealt with a lower back issue before lower back issues can be very very painful and it's a lot of discomfort and you know i was i was i was walking around with back brace i was applying heat pack before games half time of games you know there was a lot of discomfort walking and things of that nature so there were days when i had to take days off and Honestly, if you know anything about the Middle East and players who have been in the Middle East, they will tell you. Those clubs will find any reason to take money from your salary. So because I wasn't training consistently because of the nagging injuries, what happened is that I had issues with my payment. My salary wasn't coming in on time. And whenever my salary came in, it was short. For whatever reason, they deducted money out of it, telling me, Oh, I didn't train this, I didn't train that. But the number one problem that I had was that my, my salary was consistently not paid at time. There was, a, there was a stretch in Kuwait when I went almost three months without being paid. Whoa. So everything, but everything was just like, so, so they would pay you, but everything is just like a back pay. So like you go October, November without pay, they pay you in December, and then and they're, they're trying to tell you, okay, this is a December pay. Okay, what about October, November? So 
you know, that situation in it will in itself became extremely stressful. And then I suffered a long term injury towards the end of the season. And then both both parties agreed to do a mutual termination. So this was probably I, I can I can say that my twenty twenty one season going into twenty twenty two, the season in Kuwait was hampered by in injuries. Yeah. Because yeah, it seemed like it seemed like um once you went to Egypt, that time up to your time in Kuwait was probably one of the most difficult times in your career. Not one of easily the most difficult time of my career. Yeah. Easily I mean, the most difficult time of my career. Yeah. What what kept you during those times that, you know, caused you to believe and to, you know, just maintain a positive attitude in the midst of all of these things that are happening with you? Just, just a strong support system, strong support system, and just, you know, mentally, just being, you know, very strong, you know, and obviously just leaning, leaning on my God, you know, just, you know, talk to him every day, pray to him, knowing that, you know, I'll get through this, none of this will last forever, and as I said, strong support system, you know, and obviously the support system, they know themselves, and um, yeah. And just, as I said, just a strong mind, just knowing that adversities are a part of the process and it's just another one that I'm going to have to overcome. Definitely. Definitely. And the, the season-ending injury that I sustained, I tore, I tore my adductor in my grind and the, the cartilage, and the cartilage, yeah, the cartilage was, was completely detached from the pelvic bone. Whoa. So when I suffered this injury, Whoa. initially when I did the scans and everything in Kuwait, they were saying, oh, it's a strain. You'll be all right, da, da, da. So I never did an, I did, I never did an ultrasound. I never did an MRI, sorry. I did an ultrasound. Because how these people operate, as I say, they don't, they feel like if they're paying you well, they want you on the field every single day, whether you hurt or not. That's just their mentality. That's just how they are. And they, they, they gave me a timeline and they said two to three weeks. No, or a season was ending. Can you recover for, from that kind of injury? Wait. I remember, you know, I told you they were saying it's a strain. Whoa. They were saying it's a strain. The timeline that they gave me is two to three weeks. But in my head, I said this can't be a strain. Because even a week after the injury happened, I still couldn't walk properly. If I cough. I feel pain. If I sneeze, I feel pain. So I said, no, this, this is definitely not a strain. So I could have done an MRI while I was still in Kuwait, but I said, you know what? The season is going to finish the first week of May. I suffered this injury in training towards the end of March. So in my head, I'm saying, I'm not going to play for the rest of the year because this is an injury that's going to need time to heal and Conversations was already going on between me and the club about a mutual termination, right? So what happened now? The time, the time fast forward, season ended. Now it's time yeah. for me to leave. We had already agreed on a mutual termination, but I was still owed two months salary. So again, things got ugly between me and the club because they didn't, they were asking me to stay in the country until the 30th of June, which was the official end date of the, the first contract. year. The f official end date of the first year of the contract, right? Right. So they're telling me if I want to be paid, they were telling me if I want to be paid until the end of June, if I want all the money, I have to stay there until June 30th. So I told them, I am not doing that. I am not doing that. I am hurt, I am injured, the season is over. And I need, honestly, I need to go home and I need to go be with my family because the season is over and it just, and no one, no one was there. Everyone was going off on vacation, holidays and all that stuff. So there was no need for me to be there. So I had to get that situation resolved with them, which I had to pretty much take a pay cut because they wasn't going to pay me in full. So I had to take a pay cut. I took a pay cut. And it turned out that when I got back to the U.S., 
I went and did an MRI. I found out, and keep in mind, this is six weeks after the initial injury. When I got back to the US, this is six weeks, six to seven weeks after the injury, the MRI yeah. result showed that, you know, the cartilage was completely detached from the pelvic bone and it's a tear, a complete tear. Wow. So Whoa. I was out for four, I was out for four months. And, and, you, six... and, you, and you had to cover all of these expenses because the contract was terminated, though you picked up the injuries there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I had, I had to cover all this expense. Yeah. So I, oh, yeah. I, I keep saying that you were talking. What about your agent in in all of this? Yeah, uh, you no, weren't so agent my, representation. Yeah, my agent, my agent was helping me in the midst okay. of all of this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this was not a battle I was fighting by myself. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So I mean, the four months passed. You recovered, and uh, where are you now in terms four, of four months passed? I, I wasn't fully healed. But at the time, I felt like I needed to be back in the game after being out for four months. So I signed on for the remainder of the 2022 season with New Mexico. And then obviously with lack of fitness, you know, with the injuries and all of that stuff, I was just never myself. So I never yeah. really got a real chance and a real shot at it in 2022. And then I just used the offseason 2022 to work on my body fix all the injuries, take care of myself. And fortunately for me, that worked out because it, tran it translated to a very good 2023 season. Okay. Which included you being called up to the national team, you know, just, just which, which is going really good for you. Um, right. some, people don't, some people don't know where you're playing right now, you know. Where I'm playing right now? Yes. <laughs> It's only money, but a lot of the people don't. A lot of them don't know, you know. I'm current. Let's just put it this way: I'm currently playing in the USL in the US. <laughs> yeah, we we'll leave it some, for now. Yeah, because somebody saying that. Listen, they they think that you, your level is above the USL, and and Jamaicans have this thing, you know. Jamaicans have this thing is that the guys in the national team, for the right. most part, they are bigger than the USL. Yeah, but as I. I can, I can, in a humble way, I can, I can agree to that. But sometimes you just have to deal with the cards that you're dealt. Yeah. You know, and that's just, that's just the reality of the sport that I play and the situation that I'm in. Um, I'm not the kind of person or, or player that's going to sit down and worry about the past. I can't change the past. It already happened. I can only focus on now and how can I set myself up for a better tomorrow. Um, and that's just where I'm at right now. Yeah. Just talk, to, just give a peep. I mean, what has your re inclusion in this with this group of players? You said it earlier that you believe that this is one of the best group of players in terms of national players, in terms of what can be achieved. Give, right. give us your take on, on this present player um, group of players, you know, having that tremendous result in Canada, qualifying for Copa America um, and all of that, Nations League. You understand me? Tell us, tell us about. All of that, like, I mean, what are your thoughts on the overall team and the crop, the group of players that you have been working with and the coach? The camaraderie is great. The, the coach, he has a plan. That's what he wants to do and he's sticking to it. He has a plan that he's implementing how he wants us to do things and he's standing on it. And that's a good thing. From the player pool standpoint, when you just... Forget the names, because you know football is not football is played on the pitch. It's it's not about names. So so forget the names for a second. But just when you look at the level that majority of these players are playing at, you know, and you think, and, and then you just look at the overall talent pool that's there, that's available, and it brings me back to the most recent performance we had against Canada. That was just sheer will, determination, fight, but also our talent. Because if we're being honest, talent-wise, we're right up there with the best in the region. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and, and I do believe that. I, I stand on that firmly. And the other guys are part of the group will tell you that. And, you know, Jamaicans, the fans, they will tell you that as well. So it's how can we display the kind of performance that we had against Canada? How can we display that consistently? It's no matter yeah. how can we do that consistently as a group. How can we put together those kind of performance consistently against 
the quote unquote top teams in the region and start to get start to get the results that we know we're capable of getting. Yeah. You, you know what they call Colorado? What they call Colorado? <laughs> the Jamaica, Jamaica switch box. <laughs> yeah, well, there's five, because, there's yeah, five because, Jamaicans out here. Yeah, because there are five Jamaicans out here. They call it the Jamaican switch box, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the YouTube is a crazy old world, you know? No, other, people, <laughs> other people are. But um, how, how would you describe your game, right? Um, yeah, like... Uh, what kind of player is Romario Williams? What is your profile as a player? Mind, 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 wait, one second. Yeah, one yeah, second. yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. My um ah uh, this I'm a see, I'm a very physical striker. I embrace contact. I'm a physical striker. I think. You know, really good at holding up the ball, connecting with midfield and, you know, wingers. I think I have very good technical ability to, to play in between the lines, the half spaces, playing the half turn. I think I do a very good job at creating for others around me. And then, obviously, I have a knack for scoring goals. And, you know, uh, everything that I describe or, or mentioned was on full display this season. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, just some other questions that we want to ask. I, I, I soon come to your people. I soon ask you. I see someone here asking, "Do you have a current club teammate um, that you think deserve a call up, namely Messi Foster?" <laughs> Mali, Messi Foster. But was it? He was recently called up though to the. Yeah, all of, all, of, all of us were recently called up. Called to up the Guatemala game. game. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. And I think it was obviously a good situation for all of us just to obviously be there and be in front of the coaches and know, know that the coaches have seen us. Now it's just a matter of us coming into 2024, starting the season off very good. And then the opportunities again will present itself. Yeah. But That's he's true. definitely deserving. Yeah. I see, I see Pesso saying two of them will be leaving this season. Um, though Dishan Beckford is one who is leaving. I think you know um, the Jamaicans they check up on your career, no? <laughs> they know. Yeah, the it seems like it seems like it seems like some information is being disclosed. <laughs> they know more than I do. Yeah, but um, someone was asking earlier, what was it like training and playing with Didi or Drogba? Incredible, <laughs> just just incredible. I mean, growing up as a kid, you know, this is somebody that you watch week in week out playing at the highest level, scoring goals. Uh, so just obviously for me, having him as a teammate for that year, for those what, six to eight months, it was just, for me, it was just trying to soak up as much information and learn as much as possible. And yeah. I can tell you it was, even though I wasn't playing much, I learned a lot just by being around and watching him, how he, you know, takes care of himself, you know, getting, you know, prepare for game and all that stuff is competitive, fire, desire to win and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it was it was incredible being around, yeah. and, you know, and that kind of player. Yeah, James Smith is asking, um, do you think you'll ever play at a higher level again? Only God knows. Everything that I do in my career is to get to a higher level. Yeah. I'm never I'm never I'm never settled, I'm never satisfied. And I put in the work and hopefully, you know, that translates to, to more success and we will see what God has in store. Yeah. Let me just go back to the schooling thing because though you didn't complete your final year, you actually went back to college and completed your degree. Right. I, I did I finished my degree online. Because okay. I didn't have I didn't have the opportunity to to go and sit in class and you know things of that nature because that was a foregone conclusion so i had to find a way how to finish and i finished it online i actually finished december december of 2021 okay and what do you what, what, yeah what, what did you major in business administration sports management 
Okay, so you're going to be an agent soon, man. When you retire. <laughs> you know, RWA, Romario Williams Agency. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. <laughs> me, me, I'm a, me, I'm a good friend, Damien. I cook up something. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, LW. LWA. Mm. <laughs> you're a good friend, Damien. I cook up something. Yeah, because you're, you're Damien. How did you guys develop that bond? At, at what time did you kind of... Uh, have that friendship established. I'll see somebody here saying that um, big up my classmate, big baller from summer school. This is a guy called, goes by the name Chris Lynch from KC. You know him? Chris Lynch. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Chris Lynch. Yeah, man. Big you, up you, used to play cricket. Yeah, man. Chris Lynch. We know Chris, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Know Chris I, even, them same have the most record for ducks at KC. Are true? <laughs> Yeah, well, talk to us about the, um, you know, how did this relationship between you and Damien, um, you know, just get so strong? Because the guys are very close. He always talks yeah. about you. You talk about him, you know, right. and stuff. So Damien and I developed a friendship through a mutual friend. So long story short, Damien and the mutual friend, Jamie Hyde, went to Vaz together. Now, oh. That's, you know... Me and Jamie, we grew up in the same neighborhood. So Damien used to spend a lot of time at Jamie's house and things of that, things of that nature. So that's where I met Damien and we, we just developed a friendship from that point forward, you know. So no, no, it's it's just like a complete brotherhood, myself, Jamie, Damien and others. Okay. All right. So All it right. Was, it's something that developed at a really young age from prep school days. Transition through to high school, transition through to college, the youth national team, the professional ranks, national team, teammates in Egypt, and even living together in Florida. I was in Fort Lauderdale, he was in Miami. So, yeah, we, we it's safe to say we spent a lot of time around each other and a lot of time with each other growing up. So, we just developed a, a strong friendship and a strong, strong brand, bond. I, I, I don't know. There are so many questions. This person, Romario. At your age, would you leave America for, for one final lucrative contract? And then... then um, That's to make sense. Yeah, and then he That's said... That's to make sense. Not only it lucrative contract, but it has to make sense from a career and a, a playing standpoint. Yeah. And, and um, then he's asking... Um, I think the person also asking if your wife is still in the army. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's I don't, leave that alone. Yeah, I don't know about that question. But no, um, so I get extremely personal now. Let's leave that alone. Oh, oh. All right. So let's jump to this, right? So you are James Smith. Do not put any because you see these guys know I don't know some other things. James Smith, do not put any questions that you know are problems in my comment section. Thank you very much. All right. So yeah, let's leave that alone, please. Yeah, man. No, we're Viewers. going past. We're going past. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this now. So now you are um there there is ten million dollars on the line now. You are talking about because you know what Jamaican money not really real. <laughs> right. <laughs> ten million US. Ten million US, right? You have mm. to select seven players. Mm -hmm. Seven players that if you're playing on the streets of Jamaica, they can play. If you're playing in Europe, they can play. And if you're playing in the States, they can play. You can so take I'm this you can take this so, seven. So I'm so I'm giving you my seven for each? No, 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 no. It's one seven that you're confident that it may not be the ideal situation, but right. they can they can bring you the results, all right? Like um, 10 million US. 10 million US, right? You have to be in the team. You need a goalkeeper to be in the team. And these are players that you would have played with. So go ahead. And you have to give us your formation as well. You know that this was coming in so <laughs> yeah, 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 but it, so it's it's seven players, including a goalkeeper and myself. Yes. So I'm already can... down to five. Yeah, and then you can then you get you, you get some substitution, so some some persons on the bench. So you get four okay. on the bench. So it's a total of eleven. Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right, let me give you some thought. All right. So my goalkeeper, so this is these are what? these are teammates, teammates I've had. Yeah, over your career. 
All right. All right. Um, I'm going to go hard. In goal, Andre Blake. And you said myself is included. <laughs> yeah, yes. So the let formation, me, the, the, form, let me, the formation. Let me, let me give you a thing, right? Corey Burke didn't have Andre Blake in the goal. He had Andre Blake playing forward because of the league that they play up by Yui, right? So he, he have, yeah, Andre <laughs> Blake will be in my goal. And he had Jamal in goal. Right. Ja Andre Blake will be in my goal. That's that's fine. Andre <laughs> Blake is my goal. So yeah. the formation will be three to one. Three, two, two one. One. All right. Right. So three, two, five, and one, six plus the goalkeeper, seven. Right. So three, yeah. two, one. But my three, two, one exists of one of the three is going to always join the attack. So I always have a balance with two stays. Join the attack? Listen to what I'm saying, no? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my team, you know? <laughs> so I'm saying, when we attack, we attack yeah. very aggressive. So we're attacking a 2-3-1. But two, defensively, oh, we're in okay, a 3-2-1. Three, 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 one. One. Okay, okay, that's what I mean. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So 3-2-1, so Andre in goal. Yeah. I'm going to go. This is seven aside, so I, I can put myself <laughs> anywhere. So I'm going to put myself as a part of the two in midfield. So, so I have Andre in goal. Up front. <clears throat> Joseph Martinez. Who? Joseph Martinez. Joseph Martinez. Um, right. Which team? He just played from Miami FC this season. He was a teammate of mine in Atlanta who won MLS Cup. Okay, okay. Won league MVP, Golden Boot, and all that stuff. Jose Martinez, this country? Venezuela. Venezuela. So, so we might see him. We might we might see him in Copa America. Okay. Right. Martinez, all right. So he's he's my striker. I'm a part of the two in midfield with Almiran. Almiran! Oh, how will go win the ball? Almiran work hard, you know. I don't want you to think for a second, Almiran do work hard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and my three in the back. Yeah. Uh, Damien. So we have two more, right? Right and left. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Wow. This is getting very interesting. So we, and you have to tell me which one of the person in the back three will transition into midfield. That's probably mm. that's probably Damien because he he he. No 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 no. no. Damien has stay home, home home home. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Um, sure. You have you have Haka that gave it that well, pass. No, no no. I'm think I'm thinking I'm thinking him because you you need you said the streets of Jamaica. You need somebody like that. Um. Jobon Watson from the right and then on the left. So Haka would have that license to, to be like a Join six. Join in the midfield, yeah. To be like a six joining the midfield, yeah. And we're talking young prime Haka. <laughs> I like, and, um, I like you're very specific with that. Young and prime on the Haka. Left, on the left, I'm going to go with... So this can be teammates from any level, yes, sir? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But only on professional or even are any level. Any level. But once you have played with them, you believe they're good enough, you can put them in your team, man. No, I don't want to. No, I'm not do that. Um, so one, one to go. I'd say. <sighs> you can imagine what a coach goes through. Because it's quite difficult go, to think so you to pick seven players. Me go, go, me go, go, me go, go with um. Me go, go with Jeremy and Taylor. Jeremy and Taylor, yeah, yeah, good center back. Play on the left side. So right. Jeremy and Damian and Haka. And Haka right. has a responsibility to go up into midfield when you're attacking. Right, right. All right. All right. Who are the so, four players? So we, have, we have so we have Damian and, and, and Taylor still. Damian Taylor, goal. Haka, Blake, mm -hmm. you, Almaran, Martinez. How right. come Didier Jagba don't make a team? Martinez. All right, all right. Give me a bench, the four on the bench. I'm gonna play with Jogba when Jogba the two has the NM career, but Martinez, oh, the season Martinez have, trust me. 
My bench. Four on the bench. Jamar Lawrence. Taxi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Boza. Two. Leon. Three. Ooh, and Nigel Ria Coca. Nigel Ria Coca. Or tell me about that player. Which team you played with him and which team, country is he from? Nigel Ria Coca is from England. He was a part of the Montreal team when I got drafted. He was my mentor, like li literally my mentor when I got drafted and I got to Montreal. Played in the Premier League for years, kept in Aston Villa. Played, okay. played in the Premier League for years. Various clubs have a ridiculous amount of But Nigel is like a center mid number six. And if I'm going, okay. I need balance. I need balance. And that's where my balance comes in. I have Taxi, Rio Coca, Leon Bowser. That's number four, eh? Yeah, people give him give 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 me out of ten, just give me some numbers how you rate um Romario Williams. But this team. but does this not this not really fit because I have so so many so many minutes. No, in the yeah, same thing. No, no, but it has just, to be fair. But just, no, but no, but just I make the case clear right now. So I'm, I'm like people women should I really in a but you know really much for work with still, but it's it's cool. <laughs> no, nobody no man. This is your team. Listen, this is your team. A man says six out of ten, some people say five. Um him no him, him no pick. Nasta party hacker. Yes, no, of course hacker is in him team. He picked hacker. Yeah. Uh yes, Rich um, some, Richie Robinson is the same, give you 10 out of 10. So you get him some good, you get him some good score. So look like you pick up more team. Team. Yeah, because Corey, Fine Corey, team. I think Corey have Leon. Corey have um have uh, Jamal in goal, he has Ethan Pinnock, Damian Lowe, um, he's on the team, he has Demari, oh lord, I don't remember it, yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, he's a strong looking team there, but yeah man, but um, what would you say to somebody, that, you know, we just completed a, a schoolboy season, and like I said, you completed, you yeah, you know, you didn't stay back in school. You went on, completed a college degree and stuff. You know, made that you know transition to college and then get drafted. Mm -hmm. Played, you know, at the highest level. Um, again, uh, probably young Alvas Powell are two of the players who have had the most success in terms of that under seventeen team, in terms mm -hmm. of national representation. And it's always good to see players just going through the ranks and making the transition. What would you say mm -hmm. to other young players out there who are probably in school now contemplating staying back in school just to um win a a, a manning cup or a da costa cup you know when there are opportunities for them to like you said go on even play in college which is a higher level because a lot of jamaicans think like college football is mm -hmm. is a lower level because manning and da costa cup have all this hype but I'm glad that you made that point that the levels are so different. Let me make this very clear. No man in cup or no Dakasta Cup can touch college football in the US. And that is no disrespect or no offense to schoolboy football in Jamaica. College soccer, college football in the US is way above or the Costa Cup, and that's final. Whether, 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 whether it is Division 1, Division 2? Well, I play Division 1, so I'm talking based on Division 1. Yeah. I, I don't know what the level is like at Division 2 okay. or even Junior College. But that's important, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But D1, it's not even close. Yeah. Not close. But advice, I mean, I just tell them, like, 
just don't think limits you know just follow your gut feeling you know aim for the highest but most importantly stay disciplined stay humble because a lot of, a lot of the kids have nowadays they don't they, they're not <laughs> humble they're not humble and it's just tell me about it <laughs> stay humble stay driven stay focused continue to put in the work and just never think limits you know never never let another person's opinion deter you from you know going after what you believe or what you want and going after your dreams and your goals because people are always going to have opinions but you can go about it and prove them wrong in the most humble way possible yeah uh your teammate a school classmate is asking ask rum rum if he prefer midfield coming out of manning cup 100 <laughs> percent but you went to the college coach and tell the college coach you play at striker yeah, yeah <laughs> but my manning cup team we had we had the most success when i played midfield oh but, when you're at kc mm -hmm. the team play better when they played midfield way better okay was it, wasn't Lenny yeah. Hyde coaching that team one season? Are you? No, that was that was that was after me. That was after me. Oh, that was my after coach you. was John Pierre's. Oh, oh, the the legend, <laughs> John Trevor Pierre. John Pierre's. <laughs> yeah, Trevor John. Woolley Harris' father. He was the assistant. Woolley was the assistant to his father. Right. Oh, interesting. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even know that. That is. That yeah, is man. interesting. Yeah, yeah and, and I also want to remind the kids what you said, that you made a decision. Yes, you listen to mother and father and thing, but at the end of the day, you made that decision, um, right. you know. Um, and then you live with the consequences of your decision, whether good or bad, right? Because right. that's yeah. just how, you know, life works. Yeah. Yeah, everything in life is a learning experience. Every decision you make, you, 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 you gain. You, you either gain or you learn from it. Yeah. And so your advice is for them to not give up. Um, never, you know, never. Yeah, the brave may fall, but never yield. Oh, geez, this KC thing again. <laughs> oh, the KC, the KC, the KC thing. I want to know, I'm going to know, I'm going to know all of them. Not I'm know all of them love it deep down, but them, them, yeah. them now go say it. <laughs> all right, tell, tell the people, how did you get the name Puffy? And that's a long story. <laughs> and before the live start, we tell you to me I deal with them. But that name they the name they are uh, name they really came out with for the U17 national team. Oh, it's from that time? Right. But the name never really stuck until a couple years after that. And then you know, just just embrace it and run with it. Oh. Man is man, ask Pavi. Pavi, 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 Pavi is really the shining for Pavilensky, but that never ever really work, so it's you know it's oh. Pavi. Uh, man is asked Pavi out of him are boomers who got more sports in talent. Uh, is boomers. boomers 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 have way more sports in talent? Who is boomers? Me. All them people who know you ask them questions now, you know, they don't yeah. figure so we don't know. Yeah, no, no, Brian, no, Brian, man. <laughs> boomers are my oldest brother, but oh, that's the problem. Not boomers Joel. Probably, that's Joel? No, Joel is the most talented footballer in the family, hands down. But Boomers is the most talented in terms of multiple sports. Yeah. Boomers was blessed with the ability to play basketball, cricket, and football. But I think that was also his downfall because he was so talented, he didn't know which one to choose. Okay. All right. Finally, before you go, because I know you have a lot that you need to do. One, which team do you support outside of the reggae boys and your club team which you know team in 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 big leagues either la liga or epl that you support my two club teams in europe arsenal and barcelona the people why you think the man so smart man why, why you think the man looks so smart man and talk to smart people the man support arsenal come on now, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, two european teams arsenal and barcelona <laughs> thank and you sir my nba nba team and lakers all right you, you well, what, what, one interesting fact that the people should know i watch more basketball than i watch football then. you watch more basketball interesting than i watch football yeah man listen i'm going to allow you to close out by you know you know just thanking some persons who they have been a part of your career and you know it's always good because maybe they're watching maybe from family friends you know schoolmate coaches 
who who have sort of you know been there at the down times being there in the good times yeah. you know being the voice that you listen to you know the one that you can call no matter what um who right. are some of those pre persons you want to pay tribute to and say thank you to um you know, as i said earlier i have a very strong support system and my support system um, then they know themselves from you know everyone has been an integral integral part of my journey and i've contributed to to my success in every single way you know and obviously like without them i wouldn't have been here so i don't want to say names because if i start calling names i'm going to leave out people that might feel offended or some type of way but every single coach every every bit of advice that i received from you know legends of the past people who are still in the game friends family you know relatives i've been an integral part of this and and i'll just continue to you know make them proud i guess yeah and they're asking you um who is the goat lebron or jordan kobe bryant <laughs> Kobe Brad. Hey, listen. Um, you need to watch some more basketball, you know. No, you can't tell me that. <laughs> I watch you... enough basketball and I know basketball. My goat is Kobe Brad. Oh, your goat. Oh, not the goat. My goat? Oh, is basketball. Oh, oh, is Kobe oh, 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 okay, okay. Kobe Brad is the best person I see play basketball. <laughs> Did did it? Oh no! Listen, to be fair to you, you maybe never watched Michael Jordan, so I, I can. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I I, I yeah, don't know Prime yeah. Jordan. There you go. There you go. Right. So right. so that is it, people. The man said that he never watched Michael Jordan. So obviously, <laughs> and for all of them where I say Michael Jordan, and them I tell lie, cause enough of them never see him neither. Hold, hold on. All right. So so in football, who is the goal? Mm, Messi. Messi. Oh, I guess you're gonna say that you never saw Pele or Maradona. So yeah, okay. You see Pele? Eh? You see Pele? <laughs> so what about video about it? You don't want to see that more than video. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Eh? Hold on, hold on. So if me show you my video, then they're gonna say, yo, that you're wicked. C compare compare to compare to no, Pele. You know the video, videos are edited. No man, them tele video are not edited, Romario man. Right. Them the tele video man are re oh yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 one thing I know, everyone is entitled to their opinion. That is true. That is true. That is true. Hey, listen, listen. I really want to thank you. You know, um, I, I really wanted to do this because sometimes the criticism that players go through. The truth is, a lot of persons don't know the fight and the battles, and right. you know the injuries, the pain, the training. They they don't see that. They see it on the field. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I struggle sometimes playing. Um, football um, is that I used to I used to know some of the people on the sideline telling you about your mother and don't boy come off of the field you idiot when you make and I'm thinking like I know you you you, you can't even read and write properly and 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 you you believe that you have some right to use all kind of derogatory terms to describe me and right. I, you, you know I just I just felt like people always have this perception that if you play football. You're you're unintelligent because it's like you know it 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 it's a it's it's a sport so the people are not the best of us so I'm right. glad people can hear this kind of story and know that you know there are footballers out there that are properly educated that if there was not football they would be making something meaningful of their lives because they're highly educated and uh, yeah and don't just don't just see a man on the field and make a mistake and then question his knowledge or his intellect you understand me so i'm glad that people can hear that story i know we shouldn't listen to it you know right but i'm glad because young people also need to know this in jamaica that you can you can get educated and still play professional football one don't have to you don't have to sacrifice one for the other don't sacrifice your education if you have the opportunity right definitely definitely yeah yeah somebody spanish town general says 
Um, he said that you're going to heaven because you support <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Leon Bailey, Leon Bailey did one of us, man. One cut down the right and chip it in and make um this little yeah it it, it had to be him yeah, yeah I'm telling you him. I am telling you I am telling you man you know I, w- I was doing well enough because I knocked Ethan Brentford I mm-hmm. knocked Luton and then the plan Amari. was now to yeah uh, yeah I'm already at Luton yeah and then right. the plan was now to knock Leon the man give me a, a Bob Marley and I'm a pipe and I tell us a star one yeah. of them things yeah, catch man. Him, man. We catch him, man. <laughs> but blessings, you know, really, uh, really, really appreciate you coming on. All the best oh, on, man. on the next no, thing. It's it's been brewing for a while, so I'm glad we, we get to do it and get it out. Finally, there. finally, finally. Yeah, man. It was a yeah, joy, man. man, and appreciate appreciate being on the podcast. Yeah, and listen, take care. You know, we know what is happening. All the best. Um, I will know that you normally are very uh uh careful um in terms of whatever decision you make so um right. ju- just trust the wisdom of the lord you know um because Definitely. all things always work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his good purposes yep. you know mm-hmm. so as you, you you know proverbs says that trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not right. thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path, path. So just, right. yeah so just do that and just trust that the lord will order your step you know blessings every time yeah um, man give thanks man appreciate it man yeah Much man respect. every time all right yeah, man. yeah there you go people um romario they call him pavi williams you understand me um one of the the, the, the heroes uh played under 17 for jamaica went to the under 17 world cup did well um no a regular part of the national team um and again i just i just doing this because sometimes we need to you know, we need to know the stories, hear the stories, um, so we can at least have uh, a little, bo- little bit more respect when we speak about our players, male and female, so we can have some more respect when we speak about them. Um, while we can criticize their play, maybe it is really not fair for us to question their 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 education, their intellect, their their willpower, their desire, their passion for the sports. They really want us to consider that. And we can become the voice of reason that when we hear it, we can interject and say, no, you can talk about the bad pass. You can talk about the missed goal. You can talk about all of those things. But you don't have to talk about them in a way that is disrespectful to a person's person. Right? Think about the decisions that he has made. Think about the decisions that he has made. I mean, Egypt, Qatar. And the truth is, like, some things just can't be said. Yep. There you go, James Simmit. We have to follow their career. So we have a better idea of who they are. And, and, and that's it. You know, and, 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 and sometimes, listen, we also have to understand that sometimes some of these players will make some decisions that we don't agree with, you know. But here's what. They all are willing to live with the consequences of their decision. You may not like it. You may not like it, you know. But they have to make those decisions because... It's their life, and they are willing to live with the consequences of those uh, decisions. All right? Um, also, I did promise that I'll have the, the Arsenal people on, but we had this interview, so I couldn't do it. I will get it done, and you will be a part of it, right? So we'll have the people from AFTV on the platform sooner than you think but we wanted to get this interview because there are some things on the horizon for the player and so we had to do that waterhouse one uh portmore united one um that's a game there uh i can't tell you who is going to be next yet that one is going to be very interesting very interesting but i can't tell you yet i have to confirm it 
tonight and then you'll know. Um, don't be holding two, Tivoli two, Waterhouse one, Portmore one. All right. Uh, Veer two, Humble Lion one, Arnett Gardens one, Limehall one, Mobe United two, Treasure Beach one. Listen, thanks to every single one of you. Really appreciate um, all of you coming on tonight, right? I know you could be doing other things, right? Yeah. <laughs> James, East is better. Uh, again, that is opinion. All right, James. Big up yourself, James Simmons. Owen Owen, Nitro, Mr. United, Peso, uh, Gunners Boss. I see Brain Drain was challenging you earlier. You know, what was Brain Drain asking? You need to check that out. Natty Congo, up and running. RR, Duclan, Mr. United, Blessing. Rob, uh, peace out. Carlington Grant, up, up, up. Man with a powerful voice. CC, CC, long time. We don't hear from you, know. From Chelsea, start so far. We're not hearing our scene. CC, often enough. KS Sports TV, Blessings, long time. Owen, Owen, Spanish Town General, you are here. Indeed, Sports Corner up and running as well. Who am I missing out? Big up to every single person. Everyone, Brian Mighten. Yeah, Chris Lynch. Oh, my word. Lee Young. Uh-huh. James Walters. Yeah, man. Michael Garden. Oh, you mean, man? What you mean, man? J. Ross, Jason. What you mean, man? Big up on yourself, you know. Big up on yourself, every, everyone. Rudy Art Garden, remember. Yeah, remember if you hear this afterward. Yes, I do know Miss Monroe. Miss Monroe used to be the English teacher. I think she also used to teach literature at Manning. She was my farm teacher. Could have been first or second farm. She was my farm teacher, Miss Monroe, she had two daughters, beautiful young ladies. They were back then, you know. Um, I think one was in my year and one was, um, yeah, uh, ahead of me. Jamie and Grant, bless up to you. Right? So, people, you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the night. Baggio, bless up yourself as well. Tomorrow, we have something nice <laughs> that is going to be happening. We don't, we don't can't tell you who yet. Would like to see Antonio on. Hey, listen, seriously. All right, here's the thing with EPL players. A lot of them are not available until off-season, especially in this festive season. It's like game, travel, game, travel, right? So they will be, you, yeah, man, don't worry yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but we, we're going to get we're gonna get the stories out there. Oh, what period I went to Manning's? Nitro, me tell her that now you're going to know me. So, so I can tell you who was the principal. So during that time, you had a principal named Bonito White. You had Miss Wagstaff who was, um, she was acting principal because Mr. Howard Jackson had died. You understand me? Yeah. Um, Mr. Romans was a math teacher down there. Mr. Scott, Mr. Myrie. Um, Mr. Bruce, Mr. Allen was the art teacher, and you know, a big up all of them people from Mannings, you know. You understand me, Mr. Romans? You understand me, all of them people that were down on Mannings, you know. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, wait, oh, wait, easy yourself, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Abuchi. Mr. Abuchi was a principal of business teacher. You know, Miss Vassal was teaching office procedures and them thing there. Yeah, man, yeah, man. So if you know a man like Paddy, you understand me. Dirk, me not talk, Dirk Brown, you know. Dirk Anderson, P.Y., Lenky Rai, Wapi, Krishna Badalu. You understand me? Desi, Dennis Ibert and Alir Khan, Alia Bernard. Who oh, again? You know, even the people are in at them time there. You see what DM I give you? Look with Fossey, you understand me? You understand me? Gary Mendez, Soul J, Sander Khan. Hey, yo. <laughs> no, man, when we go to school, we used to do typewriting and office procedures. We 70s, we want to talk about. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and oh, I'm not like your style, but you know, oh, and oh, and oh, civics. Yeah, yeah, we used to do civics, you know. You understand me? We used to read all like, escape the last man speak on them thing there. You understand me? Animal farm. I worry about things, but we know, we know, we think, you know, we know, we think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there was a teacher there, they used to call period, you know. Mm. Mr. Coot. Mm. <laughs> hey, Duclan, when you go to school, they never used to do typewriting and office procedures. Talk the truth. Talk the truth, Duclan. They never used to do civics, home economics, office procedures, and typewriting. Them time the people never used to do computer at school. In Duke, not talk the truth, Duclan. Duclan, talk the truth. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Eh. Duclan taught the truth. Duclan now nah, answer Duclan. Rob Simmons, didn't it, they used to do office procedures and typewriting when you go to school? It's <laughs> Duclan lying. <laughs> Duclan. <laughs> Oh uh, my god. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Them time there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but people, bless up yourself. It was a very good show. You understand me? As usual, you know, I am man is man. This is I am sure sports. And when it comes to uh, this point of the show, um, yeah, we normally say we are over. And we are O U T out of here. Boom, check it out. I don't know it's Jason. No. I'm a represent for I am sure sports. For the latest news and updates, check out I am sure sports. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, subscribe and share. Jason presenting I am sure. I am sure sports. Boop.